All right. How's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. About 10, 12 p.m. here, California time, May 18th, 2024. We're already almost through May. Goodness. Um, again, about 10, 12 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Obviously, uh, we've got some movement going on here in Southern California. Also, a pretty significant swarm out there on the big island of Hawaii as well with the latest quake on the globe, a 2.2 earthquake. Now, let's look at Southern California here. Goodness, we're... Uh, we are jumping with earthquakes out here, and uh, it's a, kind of a big deal. All right, I, I want to go over a couple scenarios here, or at least points of interest, because a lot of folks, the big time news agencies out here, um, I'm not going to mention names, are stating that this is a very small earthquake swarm occurring. Uh, near the Brawley seismic zone with roughly about 28 earthquakes. Okay, you guys seen what I just did, right? I switched up the USGS magnitudes from all magnitudes to 2.5. And yeah, if you look at this, yeah, only about 28 earthquakes. That's really not that big of a deal. The largest one so far um, with this model shows a 3.9. So yeah, I've, I've been looking at a lot of comments, reading a lot of um, comments from the viewers that are uh, watching these videos that are stating that there's only a you know a handful of earthquakes out here recently and they're stating yeah it's all common this area sees a lot of swarming on occasion it's not that big of a deal 28 earthquakes yeah it happens a lot that means it's relieving stress here on the fault okay so if you go off that number you know and, and you want to be um, lenient on all these earthquakes that are taking place okay so beat it but add on all the magnitudes here, and we're close to 200 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, okay? That in itself is not normal, right? We don't normally see 200 earthquakes down here stirring up off of the Brawley Seismic Zone, by the way, which is an extensional fault system here of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, the Salton Sea Volcano area sits a little bit further up north here. This is just, this is regional stress activity here. Now, this swarm in itself is not just popping up out of the blue. Specifically in this area, maybe so. But we have to go back here in the last few days. I got the last week of activity stirred up out here. And this is what geologists and whatnot like to look for. We like to study background activity. We like to look at what happened before this swarm. Was there any activity stirring up down here in the Gulf of Mexico? Was there any uh, further activity somewhere else? Uh, a lot of people, you know, news agencies focus on the main swarm, larger magnitudes to not scare the public. But when you look at the bigger picture here, right, the bigger picture over the last seven days, We've seen a significant swarm down here south of the border. It doesn't matter if there's a huge border wall 50 miles high or not. It's going to, this is geology. Mountain ranges don't count in politics, right? We've seen a big time swarm down here south of the border, just off of the Imperial Fault, which is an extensional fault here of the plate boundary, which leads into the Brawley Seismic Zone, which then in itself leads into the, you know, you can name these whatever you want. They're basically one and the same, the San Andreas Fault. Okay, name them whatever. But that activity there, back on the 14th, 13th, and 14th here, which is roughly about four days ago, was a significant swarm. We watched that migration travel upwards here to where we're at right now. And you can't, you can't deny the fact here that this is a regional stress event, not just... You know, um, the one area down here, one area down here. This is a whole regional stress event. And that's a little concerning itself because this whole area is under the gun in terms of a large scale potential event, earthquake activity event. And we're talking about an 8.1 earthquake. We're not talking about a 6 pointer, 6.9, 7.4. We're talking about above an 8 pointer out here. Let's go ahead and look at what we've seen so far. So look at that. I mean, when you have one swarming down here, right, one area, and then you see a migrational pattern. And, and if you go back four days ago, 
look what I said in my videos. I said to watch for migrational activity out here. And that's exactly what we've seen here four days later after that video that I announced that. So we're seeing that elevated activity. The next thing to watch for is elevated activity closer up here along the Brawley seismic zone, right? Which is awfully close to a triggering zone. You ask any geologist and even the uh, face of the USGS in the earthquake world, you got Lucy Jones, right? Whenever there's a big earthquake in Southern California, the first one to pop up on your local news and all over the place is going to be Dr. Lucy Jones. And she knows her stuff, right? But also at the same time, you know, she mentions about a triggering zone out here, uh, which is a mile or two uh, from the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Me, myself, and I, I tend to think that any type of swarming out here that we've seen uh, migrate further northward is a little concerning, right? Look at that. It's not traveling southward. This is migrating northward closer to the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. So a look at the activity. We got 180 earthquakes. I'm guessing, uh, you know, I'm almost certain this will probably be over 200 earthquakes here um, by midnight California time. Still, we got, you know, about two hours here before midnight. Uh, seismograph stations here to watch are going to be the ANSA station right here and also the Barrett, sta uh, Barrett station, which is in Southern California as well. They've been picking up on some of the earthquake activity. So we got 180 earthquakes of various magnitudes, of various steps out here. This is not volcanic activity. Uh, some folks might be thinking that, but the salt and sea, the buttes out here, the uh, volcanic activity is more northward here in this region. And if you look at the last seven days, it doesn't go along with that. If we never seen this swarm here and we've seen earthquake activity ramping up specifically in this region for maybe uh, you know weeks at a time with significant swarming then it could be volcanic activity but this is migrational plate stress out here putting a strain up against the, sa uh, the southern branch of the san andreas fault 181 earthquakes the largest magnitude so far at 3.9 this is not kick off as a 3.9 event followed up by many aftershocks. This is just an intense earthquake swarm with no main earthquake, no main magnitude. Now, a lot of people, you know, I see it a lot in the comments here saying how this uh, relieves the stress on the big one. I, I don't understand how this could relieve the stress on, you know, relieve the stress from the big one happening. It doesn't make sense. The migrational pattern right here shows incredible stress going up and northward here towards the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. It's, that is not relieving stress. That is adding further strain and pressure out here against the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Yes, there is a lot of earthquake activity. Yes, we have seen, uh, seen swarms out here before. Uh, the question is, are we going to keep saying that? Yeah, this is common. You know, these are earthquake swarms that come and go. We could say that the next hundred times here or or maybe one more time and we'll see the big one happen out here. You know, the question is, we don't know 100 percent if this is, you know, not going to knock down the domino effect of triggering the big one out here. Anytime we see earthquakes swarming out here this close to the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, I get a little excited. OK, I really do. I'm sure you guys can hear it in my voice. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. And it's a big deal of many geologists and whatnot to watch this. A lot of people like to downplay it. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Things, they come and go. You know, you could, it's just, it doesn't make sense to say that. Because one of these times when they're saying that, we're going to see the big one out here. And they're going to come up with excuses as to why, you know, they, they, uh, uh, they, I don't want to go off on that topic, but let's look at the matter at hand right now. Okay. The earthquake activity hasn't died down whatsoever. These earthquakes are continuing. They've continued through, uh, throughout the day. They started roughly about one o'clock in the morning with a 1.6 earthquake. Okay. That is the main quake. If you want to start, if you want to go into technicalities, and then it only got intense from there with, you know, obviously a lot of earthquake activity coming up on almost 200. Now, 
Ah, yeah, where did it go? Is it right here? Okay, it looks like I closed a few windows here. I want to go back here to my um, standby here for just a second. I, I had it all pulled up, and then I closed it down, I guess. The Southern California Seismic Network, which monitors uh, seismograph stations here. I like to look at the raw data. If you know me, I like to look at the raw data. And this is a Westmoreland station here, which doesn't really look like it's picking up a lot of the activity. I don't know what's up with that station. Maybe uh, this station right here, CIIMP. There's some of the earthquake activity over the last... Uh, what do we got? Only got four hours of earthquake activity right there. If we go back prior to that, you can see more of that earthquake activity throughout the day. Uh, this is a recorded data. So, you know, there's a lot of events going on here uh, within this region. And let's go ahead and take a look at historical data out here, okay? Um, I pulled up 7.0 since the year 1000. I just I just put up the year 1000 just for um, just for good measures. Doesn't mean that everything's being reported out here in the last you know since the year 1000, but uh, just from what the USGS is reporting. So the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault extends from the Salton Sea area up here northward. Now. One may claim here that the 7.5 back in 1812 was the big one out here across this area, but not necessarily because this region here is way capable of producing something much bigger than the 7.5. The 8.6 up here, uh, 7.9, excuse me, 8.6, <laughs> that would not be good. Uh, back in 1857 was the central branch here of the San Andreas Fault. And back in 1906 was the uh, kind of the northern end here of the southern branch or the northern end of the San Andreas Fault. So we have not seen a large scale event out here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault in over 300 years. There's been a lot of data on it, a lot of mentioning of um, right here from this article here in the Wikipedia. While the southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years, right? So we know the stress is there and it's capable of producing an 8.1 magnitude earthquake. That's not fear mongering. That's basically science, geology and whatnot. And if you wanna look at the central section, right? Of the San Andreas Fault, that could be somewhat overdue as well. Uh, back in 1857, look how much time has passed. So there's no doubt there's an incredible amount of stress out here against the California region. And uh, we, we've been fortunate here in our techno te technology, right? Look how much time has passed. Look how much has evolved. We're talking on cell phones. You guys are watching me probably on your TV. That may be hooked up to the Xbox or PlayStation or your cell phone. It, uh, we're super advanced. We are super advanced. And there's been so much time where we've been very mellow in terms of earthquake activity. But that's about to change, I think. Things are progressing. Again, over 300 years, folks, since we've seen a full rupture. At least 300 years is what it's mentioned here. And that is capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. Don't believe me? There's been, there's been many research out here on that uh, potential uh, the southern segment which stretches from parkfield in monterey county all the way down to the salton sea where we're currently seeing the earthquake swarm is capable of an 8.1 magnitude earthquake so uh you know i don't think i have to mention what would happen out here when that does happen we're talking about tremendous loss of uh uh, not, not only property damage, but also many, many, many casualties out there as well. So here's the tectonic plate view here. Uh, I, I might have something better than that right here. There we go. Not Maybe not as graphic, but you get it. The general idea here is that the Pacific plate is moving to the northwest, right? That's going to be the yellow here. The arrow is pointing to the northwest. 
Uh, and the uh, North American plate here mainly moving to the southeast, while the entire North American plate generally stretching off towards the, uh, it's got a westward movement, southwestward movement here as the arrows are pointing. These are all GPS um, coordinated measurements out here. So as things get locked out here across this area, the Western Pacific, things tend to build out here across the Eastern Pacific because the general plate theory here is showing that North American plate here, just kind of crunching up here against this region of the Pacific plate. Now, there are, we have seen some earthquake activity out here recently, but a lot of times when we see elevated earthquake activity here in California, we have seen Hawaii as well. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But when things look like this picture that we're seeing right now, we normally see some type of major earthquake event take place out here across the Western Pacific that relieves the strain and stress out here against this area that I'm just chatting about here in California. If it doesn't happen, <clears throat> obviously we're looking at the potential of seeing some larger movement out here in the areas that are strained and showing elevated earthquake activity. So this is gonna be interesting to watch here over the next, uh, who knows what, next couple hours, next couple minutes, uh, next day or so, whether we see some large scale event out here across the Western Pacific that would relieve strain out here, or we see some uh, continued swarming or maybe even some larger scale activity event take place out across Southern California. It's undeniably vis you know, visual. You got a visual perspective right here of what happened here in the last few days. Migrational activity up north, uh, it's kind of a big deal. So we gotta watch this region here. Uh, north of the swarming area, mainly Brawley northward for some uh, potential migration of activity stirring up here. We did see a couple earthquakes here throughout the day, 2.1 and a little one, uh, looks like a 1.6 from earlier this morning as well, following this warming activity. So it's, you have to look at the, you know, the big picture here, the domino effect of what's going on. Further strain here south, um, obviously has migrated, added further strain up north. And what's up north, right? You got to remember that the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And that's where the beast, that's where the sleeping giant, you know, I heard about it when I was a kid. California is going to fall off in the ocean because of the big event. Well, this is a big event, but California is not going to fall off in the ocean. It's not designed. The plate dynamics out here is not a subduction zone. This is a transform fault. But you know what? An 8.1 is going to do a lot of damage out here for sure. So now is the time to be prepared. Keep an eye on the swarming. You know, this has not gone down whatsoever. It continues to come up even as I speak. Last one at 1.5 in the last two minutes. So uh, these are not going away. We got to watch this pretty closely. And uh, all right, so let's look here elsewhere, see what else we got. Northern California, for the most part, has been awfully quiet, aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is, it's it's just an area that sees earthquake activity because of hydrothermal plants out there. There's a lot of energy uh, being produced out here due to the heated regions below, and there's a whole process involved in creating energy out here. I, I try not to cover it too much because I've mentioned it a lot. <laughs> There's just numerous plants out here that uh, utilizing the heated areas below uh, by injecting raw sewage into the heated areas to create some type of dry steam that uh, creates energy. I, I don't know humans. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Okay, but they found a uh, literally a way to create energy by getting rid of a lot of uh, you know what? down there below the surface but also at the same time it creates earthquakes uh into the pacific northwest relatively quiet really nothing major going on let's check out the cascadia trimmer tonight uh which shows nothing so right now it tells me all the activity could find here along this bend in the plate boundary and this bend builds up stress a little bit slower compared to other areas along the plate boundary 
Um, but man, can they produce bigger earthquakes out here? So let's just watch it, folks. I mean, it's it's not fear mongering. It's information, and I think everyone should be advised of what's going on out here. Um, I, I don't like it how the USGS were. Or, it's not the USGS, but other big time news agencies were showing a small swarm. There's a small swarm of earthquakes down here in Southern California, folks. We're looking at only 28 earthquakes here, and this is very common for this area. It's like, really? Come on, give me a break. We got almost 200 earthquakes right now coming in. You know, it's that little button right here. A big difference between 2.5 and all the magnitudes. We need to be transparent, right? Let's produce all of the magnitudes because literally an earthquake is an earthquake, whether it's a 1.1 or a 2.5, right? You guys agree? I think we all can agree. All right. Uh, so that's the main area to watch right now there in Southern California. One earthquake out here in the Stockdale, Texas area. I already know what's out there. Quite a bit of oil fields. Lots of them. If you've ever flown over this area of Texas, we got lots of these oil pads. And man, are they numerous. So we are seeing some earthquake activity out here uh, in Texas. New Madrid seismic zone. Seeing a 2.1 early this morning. Nothing going on there for now. Um, Hawaii, all right. Hawaii, I, it almost seems like when California, Southern California, West Coast area is having extreme events such as what we're seeing right now, that things get ramped up here in Hawaii. And they are literally ramping up out here across the Kilauea volcano. We got about 90 earthquakes here across the big island, including one off the West Coast here, a little odd earthquake showing the strain out here against the Pacific Plate uh, with a 3.2, 29 kilometers deep here. But the main area to watch for volcanic activity, obviously stretching off and migrating. Didn't I say to watch for this? Migrating out here to the east rift zone. Um, it's advancing that far, uh, further south here, further southeast. And that's a pattern to watch because that is a displacement of magma probably occurring up from the summit region. Uh, let's go to the volcano hazards map here and see what's going on. Okay, stand by for a second. Uh, the volcano there at the Kilauea still currently sitting at a yellow. But look at that pattern. We've got a separate swarm here at the summit, but also at the southeast or the uh, upper east rift zone, but stretching out here towards this area across the uh, a little bit further south seismograph stations here does show some of that activity in the last 12 hours it looks like things have died down a little bit here in the last six hours or so but still um, this is an area to watch because we've obviously been seeing some elevated activity stirring up out here in terms of inflation magma has accumulated quite nicely underneath this area now we are noticing a little bit of deformation data but that could be because we're seeing things um move around and that's why we're seeing some of that elevated earthquake activity not not in southern california but over here across the east rift zone so things may be deflating up here but we're seeing that magma further uh, to the southeast out here. And that's a little concerning because that 2018 eruption was out here. And uh, we, we got to watch that. Back in February, we seen a uh, an event take place. Let me show you guys right here. February, we were at our highest level of inflation here. Look at that. Since 2018, we're well above that right now, by the way. Back then in February, we seen a huge displacement of magma from the summit area off to the southwest rift zone, which is further down here across where we're seeing earthquake activity right now, down here in this area. Uh, there was actually literally a line stretching from the summit area off in this area right here, stretching almost out to the Lohi Seamount. But now we're seeing a little bit different scenario. With elevated inflation occurring, we're seeing 
uh, a displacement displacement of magma occur, I believe, further off to the east rift zone. I believe that's what's happening. We'll have to watch that for verification purposes, but I believe that's what we're seeing. Look at the last... Uh, well, this is the past year GPS system right here. And as you can see, we had a couple readings up here, way up here. Um, that's quite crazy because that puts us at our highest level uh, since 2018 with the ongoing inflation event. Again, this is a summit. It says the East Rift Zone, um, but I believe we're seeing that displacement of magma further uh, to the southeast here take place. So watch that here in the coming days. We're getting to a very dynamic standpoint right now uh, where things are going to get very interesting. Whether we're going to see just a displacement of magma off here. Maybe it will sit down here for a little bit, or we may see an eruption take place out here, similar to the 2018 eruption. It's definitely something to watch here pretty closely. All right, so moving past that, uh, we do have one earthquake out here in the uh, Kermadec Islands region of 4.9. New Zealand, fairly quiet out here. Uh, a lot of older movement uh, in terms of you know, decent activity of 5.7 in Papua New Guinea. Some activity in Japan. Uh, 5.3 way down in the Southern Pacific. We got to watch this because. Let's see, that stirred up here earlier. Late afternoon time period, it looks like. I'm trying to pinpoint exactly where we're going to see some further movement because. Uh, there's been numerous times here where we'll see elevated earthquake activity here in California, Hawaii showing swarming, and a big earthquake about ready to take place, whether it's along the Western Pacific, or we've even seen events here where we've seen an eight-pointer up here in Alaska the last time we've seen something similar like what we're seeing right now. So got to watch it. Uh, Pacific plate is definitely moving around, and there's a lot stirring up here below the surface in terms of magma uh, and plate adjustment here across California. So we're going to have to watch this pretty closely. I don't think this is going to go away in California and Hawaii until we see some large scale movement take place. And, you know, as I mentioned, it could be Alaska area. It could be along the Western Pacific. Something big is brewing out here. Um, it's either that or we're going to see some further large scale movement out here in Southern California. So we'll watch this here throughout the evening and, and basically see what happens. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Oh, look at way up north here, though. Well north of Greenland. I guess you can kind of call this the, the North Pole, right? I don't know if Santa Claus lives right up there or not. But, uh, you know, if you, if you put the globe on a perfect scale, it kind of spins up there on the northern pole. So 4.4 and a 5.4 stirring up here at the very top. You can't even see it on the USGS map. One uh, would have to look pretty closely up here to see what's going on. So that activity, divergent zone activity up there. Let's see what's going on for the uh, Iceland activity. Because uh, things are no doubt connected, right? Doesn't look like things have stirred up out here across the Iceland area for now. Uh, this is another region that we have to watch pretty closely because similar to Hawaii, but in its own different um, perspective of, of an eruption, things are elevated underneath this area of the Savart Singi region. Uh, earthquake activity has been mostly to the south here around the Grindavik area, just northward here. So... We're watching maybe for some eruption activity take place here. Hagafell southward, maybe even northward. But uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards. I don't like to be a negative Nancy here, but things may be looking like they may be popping up here around the Grindavik area south. Um, nothing yet, but things are inflated. They're at one of the highest levels here that we've seen in terms of inflation recently. And I'll show you guys. Uh, this update was put out yesterday. And bring up this map, right? Uh, where do you go? Where did we go here? Um, uh, 
updated in May 16th. It, it looks like they put out a couple different ones. So this is one graph here showing the inflation. Here's the current ongoing inflation underneath the area. The stars indicate eruption. This is the inflation level. Volume of magma accumulated. We're at 16 uh, million cubic meters of magma right now. We're in a circle because we haven't seen the eruption. But all of this has built up while we were seeing our last eruption, which lasted for about two months. So things are, they are well inflated underneath this area. And if you look at historical data for the years, um, there's, it looks like a little chart. They popped up here quite elevated. Iceland is no doubt just an area that, uh, is prime for new land prime for additional eruptions that take place here. Um, so we'll have to watch that. There's 16 million cubic meters of magma have now been added to the magma chamber since March 16th. And that, you know, is a, a significant amount, but also at the same time, this occurred while we were having an ongoing eruption here. So things are getting quite crazy out here across uh, a couple different regions in terms of volcanic activity. All right, let's see what else we got here. Anything aside from this decent swarm there in Southern Cal, 1.5 coming in right now. There's the Alaska area. Quite a bit of forest stirring up out here. We got to watch this region, right? We, we tend to disregard this area because it's, uh, well, it's a major subduction zone, but it's really not a major population area, but they can get some big earthquakes. And if you look at the historical or at least the uh, GPS charts here, this is a major subduction zone area and the arrows all kind of pointing in this region. Got North American backing this up here. One area we haven't seen a big earthquake in in quite a while, and I've chatted about this a lot, is the Kurokamachaka. This area I feel is primed for a mega quake. This area is reinforced not only by the Pacific plate moving to the northwest, but the North American plate from the north, the Eurasia plate from the uh, the um, northwest here. Notice these arrows pointing in this area. Major subduction zone area, at least 83 mm per year, and we haven't seen a mega quake out there in quite a while. Yes, down in Japan, 2011, but I'm chatting about this area right here. The Kuril Kamchaka Trench stretches up here from about this bend area southward here. Here's the Japan Trench right about here. So there's so much at play right now, so much at stake, and uh, we just got to watch that. Be prepared. A lot going on right now in the world uh, as far as earthquake activity and uh, volcanic potential. Uh, space weather activity, relatively dull. And that is the key word right now because things have uh, dropped down here into the relatively stable sea flare category. Aside from that long duration M flare uh, about 36 hours ago, things are relatively stable there. We do have a G1 class storm potentially clipping us. That's going to be from that uh, M flare that kicked off there that you see on the chart. Uh, could be enhancing our aurora activity here on the May 20th time frame. But uh, just going to be barely a glancing hit from that uh, CME. Here is the current, mag well, this is the older one, but the current magnetogram image shows uh, the complexity of the magnetic fields. This one, unfortunately here, I had my hopes up for it. This is the inflare area, uh, that long duration inflare that we've seen yesterday or the day before. It looks like it's starting to degrade doesn't look like it's uh amplifying at all uh, but we'll still watch that and the rest of these sunspots out here there's really not a whole lot of hope for them um maybe a little development down here across the southwestern limb of the sun but yeah i, I was watching this one pretty closely it came around the bend there as a ginormous sunspot looking pretty promising but it looks like it may be in its dying stage 36.85 there. Uh, the overall threat right now, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 40. X flare down to about 10% chance or so. And uh, there's just, I don't know, there's not a whole lot happening right now. 
uh, 20, uh, 3685 there. Not quite as dynamic as that sunspot that we've seen a couple days ago, right? That's going to be 3664. Look where it's at right now. Off on the uh, far side of the sun. Now, whether that comes back around the bend or not, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll watch that here in the coming weeks. See if it uh, holds on to its status as a, uh, you know, a, a massive event maker. I mean, literally, we've seen uh, some CMEs down, or we've seen auroras down into the Caribbean area. So it was a major event. A lot of people comparing this event that we've seen here recently uh, with the auroras to the Carrington event. But uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? A lot of uncertainty onto uh, the dynamics involved there from back in the 1800s compared to what we've seen here. Um, with 3664 creating those auroras recently. So we'll watch that. Um, we do have 3663, a ginormous sunspot. Going to be here in a little while. Uh, but that is a region to watch as well for some uh, potential larger flare events as uh, it gets closer here to the Earth-facing side of the sun. But we'll keep an eye there on 3664. Right now, uh, we'll see it in a couple weeks. Uh, Yellowstone National Park Super Volcano. This is wind events. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. This is some wind event out there from earlier this afternoon. It kicks up always in the afternoon time period. And we are headed towards the summer months. So a lot of the severe weather shifts up here to the north from the southern plains. So we'll see thunderstorm activity rolling through some wind. And it will light up like crazy. But it's not magma. It's not, you know, don't, uh, don't fall for that. As far as earthquake activity, it looks like maybe a little small spike of an earthquake there earlier this afternoon. I think uh, the USGS reported it. No, they didn't. It is a weekend, so they'll probably get to it Monday morning. But there's really not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening here across Yellowstone National Park there for now. Southern California, obviously a different story. We'll watch that pretty closely, folks. And the main area to watch as uh, far as... Um, seismograph stations here are going to be the one up here on top okay this is the run that one that's running on the live stream barrett is there uh sits roughly uh, to the west of this swarm uh, so that has picked up some of the activity also i have a um anta station uh, which is right here which also picks up some of that activity that's occurring out here unfortunately i can't find a specific a seismograph station here for this area you know locally to this region but anything that does pop off we're seeing it there across those mentioned seismograph stations so we'll continue to watch this see how things play out uh, as mentioned here there's a couple scenarios that like i like i said here we're going to see this earthquake swarm continue until we see something bigger take place here across the western pacific or we're going to see some larger scale events take place here across the eastern act uh eastern pacific plate uh, what do we got 4.5 solomon islands coming in looks like that's one of the latest earthquakes there so we'll watch it folks and uh you know make sure you guys subscribe here to the channel so you can get notified notified when we provide some important updates such as what we're seeing right now um, it's, we try to stick to the facts here. It's not fear mongering. I'm not saying there's going to be a big earthquake out here, but the potential exists, right? Been over 300 years to deny that would be to be foolish. When there's an earthquake swarm very close here to this area, the potential exists. Uh, and in fact, it's probably heightened, um, because of the earthquake swarming that's occurring in close proximity here to a well overdue fault system and plate boundary here that's capable of producing you know something much bigger than the six pointer we're talking about 8.1 all right we'll keep an eye on things here overnight um we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning i gotta get a little bit of sleep tonight it's 11 o'clock here california time so make sure you guys subscribe please like the video it helps us out a lot uh, main thing is liking here liking the video We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning. Have a good night, folks.